Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thank you, everyone, for spending your time to join this webinar, Nuendo 11. And today, we're going to have a special guest all the way from Hamburg, Germany. We have Mr. Aldo here, and also Mr. Kevin. Okay, so guys, if you are watching now, watching it live now, if you have any question, do drop in the Q&A chat box here. If you have any question regarding Nuendo, and you want to ask, and our speaker today, Mr. Aldo, will answer you right away during live. All right, Are you guys ready? Okay, without further ado, I will pass this time straight to Mr. Aldo and he will start the sharing for Nuendo 11. Thank you so much and good evening, everyone. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today. My name is mentioned before is Aldo Lamana. I am a senior product specialist at Steinberg Media Technologies. And today we are actually from uh, presenting from Hamburg. So the headquarters from Steinberg. And the whole Pro Audio team would like to give you a warm welcome. Um, it's not as many people as some people think, uh, but uh, it's enough to make things happen. And we, we have been working very, very hard to deliver these products to you. So all of them give you a warm Welcome to today's tutorial and, and, and also Q&A at the end. So as I mentioned before, whenever you have questions, you can type them. I won't be seeing them, but at the end, we have a Q&A session. Now, the Nuendo environment, it's basically um, grown. It has grown a lot since, let's say, a decade. Originally, Nuendo was intended to be kind of like a surround sound solution. And from that point on, we have expanded for, to many different industries. And that has to do a lot with post-production, also with game audio and VR. Today, um, because it's such a big software, we have decided to kind of split this into two sessions because it will be just probably too much information for just one session. So today's session, which is the first one, will be mostly an introduction to the interface and to Nuendo. Um, probably most of you have used Cubase, maybe not the latest version. So I'm just want everybody to be on the same page. So I will show a little bit of the interface. Then, I'll go to the music and sound design features, and then we'll go a little bit into game audio and virtual reality. And um, then in the second session, which is next week, is going to be the real, let's say, the hardcore post-production things that Nuendo has that are very, very unique. And that has to do with automatic dialogue replacement, which is very important for Netflix, for example. So replacing the dialogue to change it to, from one language to the other. Uh, reconforming, which basically adapts the whole project to a change on the videos. So it's very, very convenient and it saves tons of time. And we'll go way further into the immersive audio world with Dolby Atmos and Ambisonics. That's next week because all this information in just one session will take in too long. I really hope this first session kind of gives you a highlight and kind of gives you some, um, let's say uh, you want to look forward for the next session because this is going to be mostly introductory and then the next session will be really, really very technical and very much into the workflow and features that are completely unique for post-production space specifically. So I will start, as I said before, so that everybody is on the same page with the user interface, because it has changed a lot since every version, of course, it changes. And of course, um, probably I, I, before I, I navigate into the application itself, I want you to know a little bit, if you are not familiar with Nuendo, where things are placed and where I'm doing. So this will be the project window where if you know the AWs, it's very similar to all the DAWs. You have all the basic information, most of the information you need. Um, and this will be the completely populated project window, which means that you have, for example, different sections. The, in the middle, you'll have 
the audio files, the instruments, the MIDI files, which is the important part of the project. Then on the left side, I have the inspector and the visibility. This is, as the name says, it's an inspector of whatever you select. So in this case, if I'm selecting the track F03, then I have everything that is on that track on the inspector. So it's like you can have the fader, you can have the inserts, you can have MIDI inserts, you can have a lot of things, uh, equalizer. So it's very, very nice to have. And it has also some other things like the visibility. I will go into more detail as we go along. That was the left part. So the right part, and sorry, the bottom part, then you have the possibility to have the mixing console, which most people use for the mixing console, but you can use it also as the editor for the audio and the MIDI files, also for the sample track and also for, also for the chord pads, which is a very, very nice feature. There's a musical feature that I will talk about in just, uh, let's say some minutes. So all this is customizable. And in the right section, then we have the monitoring section, which is the control room, the so-called control room. And this emulates, let's say, the master section of a mixing console. So I have a very big red button, which is my master, has nothing to do with my stereo out. It will not mess with my mixing console. It's just for monitoring. And I have also, for example, for my headphones, and I have my down mixes. I also have the levels for the loudness metering. I will, so let's say if this is too much for you and you say, okay, this is too populated, then of course you can just have a very simple project because everything is customizable. So in my case, I will have the three sections open at most at every time. So if I go to my application, this is just how I am used to work, but of course, for example, normally I will take the down part because I'll have a second monitor for my mixing console, just like this. But if, you have, if you're working on a laptop, like I'm working now, then you might want to have the, the bottom part. And th this is all, you can take it in and out with these little squares here in the right upper corner. So I can just select to have only my project and uh, one thing you will notice as I go along, for example, when I open my mixing console, is that because we have key commands that are customizable, then I move very fast in the application. And this is because apart from the key commands that already come, I can customize my own key commands. So even for a mixing console or the, the zooms, for example, this is very easily. This, for example, is one that I customize it myself with the arrows. You can do it. And um, it's uh, very simple to do, actually. So uh, you just go to a key commands, assign whatever uh, the um, command you want, and then you're ready to go. There is even, so here are the key commands. I even have a key command for the key commands window. So if I want to open the key commands window at any time, I have a key command for that. And here, as you can see, you can select any option. And this is the reason why you will be that I'm kind of flying through the application uh, without going through menus. So you can customize it. Good to mention is that you also have the key commands from other DAWs. So if you're coming from any other DAW, you, you can have those key commands into Cubase, which are already saved. So you can have also some key commands for any other DAW. So if there's another engineer that comes to the room and he's used to any other DAW, then the key commands are there for that engineer in particular. So I'm gonna open the inspector and my control room. In the inspector, as mentioned before, if I select the tracks, then everything will pop out and I am able to have some inserts and everything that I need over here for each of the tracks. Now, apart from the specter, there's something very nice, which is called the visibility. And this will allow me to minimize my project very easily. For example, if I want to only look at the kick drum and I want to, and there are, there's like a hundred tracks, I just shift click on it and then I have only my kick drum. And this is connected to a mixing console. So you can just 
start opening the tracks as you wish. And of course, everything is sounding. It's, it's not that it's gonna be muted. It's just that it's taken out of the view. So for mixing and arrangements and just finding things, this is very, very convenient. And the mixing console is locked to this. And you can even lock the four mixing consoles that we have available. So you can have four different mixing consoles and lock it to a project if you wish. So this is very convenient. I will be using this a lot to go through my project. Um, some things that are, um, let's say, from the organization point of view are very convenient. Uh, this project seems maybe not that big and that's because everything is into folders now. So we have the so-called folder tracks. This used to be until not that long ago, kind of uh, like an exclusive, but the other DAWs have seen how amazing this is. And they, of course, have integrated them into their workflows also. But we do have some advantages, of course. And as you can see, I have everything organized. For example, I have my drums here in red and then bass, percussion, guitar, melodica, etc. So I left the drums out of a folder on purpose. So you can see how easy it is. If I want to adapt, let's say, um, I want to have all my drums go to one folder. I just right click and I can have this function, which is move selected tracks to new folder. And that will make them, I'll put the red so that, and I'll rename it. So drums. And now they're all into one folder. So very easy. One thing that it's very convenient, I love this for mixing mostly, uh, it could be for music, for films, for, for many, many things. This little thing over here uh, called group editing. If you have tracks into a folder and you enable this, then all the functions will follow along for every track. What I mean by that is, for example, if I have different versions of the, of the drums and I put everything into one folder and I want to hear the second version, let's say, or the first version, I just changed to one thing that's called track versions, which is super convenient and basically allows you to have, this is called lanes in some other DAWs. Track versions is basically different versions of the same track so that you can then comp compile it. And for drums and for groups, this is amazing. If you have group editing, then you can select and the whole thing will change accordingly. So now my whole drum kit is changing from my first version to the second version. But the power of this is that the plugins remain. So if I have a compressor or let's say you have a chain of plugins, like a, the, my frequency equalizer, on my uh, kick drum and different um, VSTs that you have for your drum kits. If you change them of versions, the VSTs will still be present and it's basically no glitches. It's, it's really straightforward. So I will play a little bit of this song. Unfortunately, through Zoom, sometimes this, the audio streaming is not the best quality. Sometimes there's some artifacts we will get the idea. I will play the song and you'll see how easy I can change between my first version of the drums and the second version of the drums. And I can easily hear how they behave with the other instruments. Version one, version two. So no glitches. And let's say you like this part where there's like a little ride going on. So um, this group editing will also apply for, of course, the editing of all the tracks, which is super convenient. And now I'll use the visibility and just highlight the drums, as I said before, so there's nothing else. And, but we can still hear them. And you can just start editing and you can also copy and paste accordingly. So if I go here, I want to copy this part. I don't have to select the whole thing. I, I can just select the, the upper part and then 
paste and then all of them will be paste. So group editing is really amazing for editing drums or anything that requires several tracks. And as I said before, great for mixing. Let's open all of this. And um, we do have, as mentioned before, a mixing console, but this is kind of like a reduced version. Not everything is there. The big one, the, the, the real mixing console, I want to show you a little bit of it because um, there are some very unique and very useful things. You can also have the visibility, so the same thing applies for this. And one thing I really love is the history. So whatever you touch, even if you open an insert and you start moving around, even third parties, everything is recorded. Even if you open any plugin that could be from any vendor, everything that you touch, everything, including the sands, everything, it's recorded into the history. So you can A, B very easily any mix. And this history will go along the whole way until you close the project. So for the whole session, you can go back anytime. So if you really think that maybe half an hour before it was sounding better, which is something that sometimes happens, <laughs> then you can go and go through the history and go half an hour before and have your mix as it was. We also, because the history gets cleared every time you close the project, we also came up with the snapshots. So the snapshots will take a snapshot of the whole mixing console and you can recall that mix. So you can just basically save that, the whole preset of the whole mixing console into a snapshot. So it's, it's not limited to the history of the project and you can have different snapshots so you can compare different mixes with different plugins, for example. And that it's also very, very nice and very unique from Nuendo. And uh, so that's this part over here. Um, with this is completely resizable. So if you have a big monitor on the side, you can resize the whole thing. And I also want to mention that there is what they call the racks. So this is, for example, you can take out things that you don't want, but for example, the pre-filter gain phase was taken out. So if you want to change the phase, just enable this, and then you can come here and change the phase or just do some high cut. The bottom line is that everything, just like a real mixing console from the old studios, this is where this concept is coming from, from the routing, to the face, uh, flipping the face, to the inserts, EQ. Then you have the so-called strip, which is basically a collection of plugins. So compressor, I mean, you have limiter, saturation, you have everything here ready to go. The sense, the cue mixes for the artist, we have up to four cue mixes. So that's a monitor mix for the headphones and even direct routing, which means if you want, for example, to have a subgroup or send signals to, um, let's say, a recorder, then you can just basically select uh, and assign through direct routing all the tracks to go to anywhere else, let's say a group, and then you can enable that. It can also be in summing mode. So you can basically sum the whole um, signals, but it's, uh, the, let's say, um, it comes prepared to not go into many places at the same time. You have to enable that because you don't want, sometimes you don't want signals to go to many places just to for feedback reasons or something like this. So if you want, you can just send things around. So the, the mixing console is super powerful. And then you have, of course, the metering that will comply to any loudness that your region or any region you're working with needs to comply with. So if you have, uh, you have to deliver to a specific region that has a specific loudness, you can change it, there's no problem. And you have the integrated 
loudness, um, which has all the short-term loudness, all the integrated loudness, and all the things you need for delivering, especially for post-production, but also for OTT content, for example. So let's see what else we have on the list. We have also uh, the possibility, just because um, I know some people come from, let's say, or, uh, or use often some other DAWs, and it's also good to know that we have some other workflows um, that will uh, will make happy some other engineers in case they are not familiar with their environment. We have the track versions, which is basically changing the version one to version two straight. But we also have the support for the so-called lanes. So if you go, I can go to project. I, the good thing about the, the Nuendo thing, because it's so big, you can just find whatever you want into the help and then it will tell you where it is so right now i want to just show you that you can take the track versions and create lanes which is uh, what a lot of people are used to and that will bring up this section right here so with this section you can basically edit and um, it's more like for example, right now I'm comping this track with this track and this is the result. So, so this is just the other way that all the AWS work and we also have support for that, just to mention. So if you're very, very used to working in, with the, in this manner, then you can also do it and then it will comp everything accordingly into the track. Just good to know. Um, I want to show you um, we have, so of course, a lot of plugins, and I cannot show you all the plugins, but I want to show you uh, one reverb that we have. We actually have two reverbs, and um, just to show you how powerful this reverb that uses impulse responses, so it uses convolution. And normally when you have a reverb with, with, just with um, impulse responses, you will have one impulse response. The ones we have, you can have up to 36. And if you change the impulse response, then you, you'll see the picture changing accordingly. And this will change the river itself. And you can load your own impulses. So if you have a favorite church, you want you really like the river, you could record that impulse response and load it here. So let's see if we can kind of hear this. I know through Zoom is not the best, but let's see how it changes. If I have a part with a sax over here, we have some trumpets. And in this case, I also want to mention, since I'm one, I want to send um, my sax group, which is here in this folder, this group over here, I want to send it so I have everything into one group so I can send the whole thing through the reverb. And uh, this is, um, is really convenient because you can automate the changes of impulse responses. So you can basically have one main river that has many impulse responses into your project and you can automate the impulse responses to change and making it very efficient on the, on the RAM of the computer. So it will save you some RAM. So it's very nice to have. And um, if you want, for example, to have um, parallel compression, uh, I just want to show you how easy it will be to just um, group all the channels to have, let's say, a parallel compression of the drums. You can just select them, right click, and then you can say group channels to select the channels. And that will effectively create a group. And now you can, you're ready to to do your, so actually have my configuration here. I, I want it to be stereo. 
and I'll call it drum group. So now it's here and I can start, um, basically everything is routed to this group automatically. So if I go to my inspector, once again, very convenient, I can see my drums have been routed to the drum group automatically. And then in the drum group, I can, for example, I'm gonna, because it's parallel compression, I'm gonna open um, a very, let's say an exaggerated compression, which we have, and it's a new thing called Squasher. And this is a plugin that does the normal compression, so the down mix compression, but it also does upward compression. So it will, it, you can squash things a lot. So basically all those sounds that are kind of in the background and then the sounds that are very present, you can change the dynamics. And it's, it can be very aggressive or it can be very subtle, of course, depending on the settings. So let's see how I'm, this all soloed. So let's see. So effectively compressing the whole thing, um, if you want, if you want, you can just send, you can do it as with so many, it's so many different, uh, let's say workflows, but just to show you that you can really easily group some tracks and just, if you want to compress a lot of the whole drum kit, so you can just do it. And because we have here the, the, the amount that you are applying to it, then you can have some parallel compression going on. And it's also multiband. It also has some other parameters. So it will be actually, uh, you have, some, also here for the mix and attack release drive and gate so it's very good for sound design and for squashing things and a lot of people use it mostly a lot for electronic music but also for rock drums for example it's very very it's fairly good and just to mention uh, we do have of course support for vcas so vca basically will be you can add vca is Having that comes as a concept coming from all consoles. So VCA is a voltage control amplifier. There's no voltage here. It's, it's a digitally controlled amplifier, but basically it adds a fader to the whole drum kit. So that's, of course, we have support for that, VCA faders. And with that, I think we, we cover some of the major editing and workflow of let's say how to move around inside the software if you have a 5.1 or 7.1 or anything that it's around you can also have down mix presets so also if you want to check in mono so in my case if i wanted to check how things are going in mono i can just do it very quickly over here so the control room is also very nice for that and worth mentioning there's the media here, so it's the media bay, which is where you can find all your files. So you can find your loop sets, your VST instruments, your VST effects. And this will be very helpful when you want to just find some sounds. It is not limited to the Nuendo environment. So you can just put a hard drive and it will also read the samples or whatever uh, things you have in your archives. So it's not limited to the Nuendo environment, which is very, very nice. Okay, so um, questions that I get a lot um, is uh, about the musical features of Nuen. And I just want to mention and mention once again, because I mention this all the time, that all the QS features are included. And these are some features that have won several, several awards. Actually, Nuendo also had 10, 10 rating by the Music Tech Magazine. So it's, it's software that you, you can be sure that it will help you in your work. And uh, we have everything that QA has in Nuendo. So even if you have QA's project, you, you, are just, you can open it in Nuendo, no problem. It's just that Nuendo has a lot of things on top, but it's completely compatible. And you can also exchange projects from Nuendo to Cubase. If you have some features that are unique to Nuendo, they will not be supported in Cubase, but if you, you can exchange files also with other producers, which is very, very nice. 
And um, so Cubase, it's been going on for a long, long time. So um, it's very, very hard to actually present Cubase uh, in just uh, in such a limited time, but I will project, which is basically mostly MIDI. I will introduce you some of the musical features that I, I think are a highlight in this time of world. So now I'm opening a new project. I can have several projects at the same time opened and then I can activate them. I can, I can share, share files between projects if I want to. In this case, to not confuse ourselves, I'll close the old one. So, and I will not save it. Okay, so this is a whole new project and it's, uh, it's very based on MIDI files. Basically, these green things are the only audio parts, audio files that I have in the project and it's on purpose because I want to show you uh, some things that we have that are very, very nice. And I will start with the chord track and the chord pads. So what is this chord pads? So this is something that if you are not the best piano player like myself, I'm not a piano player at all, for example. So um, I cannot play that well chords. I can play guitar, but the piano is a problem for me. So. It was always an, an issue for me to do the right chords, even with the tensions. And if you start getting into more musical stuff, it's even more difficult. So we came up with a way to have chords easily assigned and easily useful for you that you can, you can connect it to any part of the project. And I made this project, the, the whole thing, basically with this, uh, this chord pad. So to show you how it looks like, how it sounds like, uh, I do have a piano here. So this is Helion Sonic. All of uh, this is coming with Nuendo. This is just a plugin that is basically like a player. Uh, it doesn't have, you cannot tweak it too much, but it has all the sounds. So for example, over here, um, this that comes with Nuendo is, it has a, a piano sound. And uh, I, do you have to activate it? Oh, that was my bad. I, I did something. <laughs> I activated the other project and did and uh, did not activate this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it again. Sorry, it's my fault. So again, we have this project here, now it's working fine. And now I'll have my piano here. I'm gonna open my chord tracks. And as I said before, this can be different parts. In this case, I will select chord pads. And you see, I'm just clicking on these squares and basically any chord that it's assigned here will be played by any instrument that you want to. In this case, this, because it's record enabled and it has the monitoring on, then it's been, been controlled by it. But you can, it's way more flexible. You can say the core track to control just certain plugin if you want, or all plugins if you want. Very flexible. So the way you input chords will be, it's actually kind of easy. You, there's a little arrow here and it says open editor and you can change the chords. Also attentions. So every chord that is available, basically it's here. And that, the, you can also change the inversion and the tensions with these little arrows here. So let's say the, in the voicing, And the tensions are here on the bottom part. So even if you have, let's say, a very um, not so complicated chord progression, then you can you can go and start playing around with the tensions and just make it a little bit more jazzy or more experimental. So it has all support for that. If you want it to um, Let's say this is all map 
to a keyboard. So if I have a keyboard, which I actually have here, you can see I'm going down the scale and there's a point where it will start controlling the chord tracks. And that I'm not doing with the mouse, but with my MIDI keyboard. So you can basically, it's basically assigning the chords also to your MIDI keyboard, uh, starting in C1, just because it's one of the octaves that most people don't use. So it's most times it's free, the C1 octave. So over there, you can have your chords. And um, let's say if you, this is great for music theory, by the way. So you can open the circle of fifths and see the relationship of the chords. And this is me just clicking on the circle of fifths. And if you change the root, then it will all change. So I wish I had this when I was studying music. It would make it very, very, very visual and nice to see. And I will be able to hear the relationship of the chords. And not only the circle of fifths, we also have the proximity chords. So you can see what chords are, let's say, in the green zone is the ones that are okay to F. And then the, the ones that are far away are kind of experimental. So not the most common ones. And that's how I make this song. Basically, I just put the chords here. If you have a favorite song, you can load a chord preset. So in this case, uh, let's call, let's uh, open a very famous song and you can just. So you can also uh, take a, a song that you know a lot and you can do some mix, remixes of it. It's very, very um, powerful. And if you go to the chord track, which is a representation of all the chords. So basically, if you want to, you can just drag and drop chords over there. And that's how I did the song, actually. Or you can just drag and drop it to the MIDI part, which is great. So then you can just have chords as MIDI. Um, and you can assign, as I said before, the chord track to control um, any plugin inside the project. Okay. Um, one thing that, well, this whole thing was created with the chord track, as mentioned before, of course, but we, I want to show you, show you two of the main instruments that also will come with it. Uh, the Groove Agent is a drum machine, so you can have basically a lot of pads and there's a support for a lot of, a lot of sounds that you can just drag and drop over there. And um, we also have here the so-called Retrolog, which is an emulation of a synthesizer. And just to show you the kind of MIDI support that we have, I'm gonna um, open the automation and we will see this plugin basically changing accordingly to the song. And uh, it's all MIDI information. There's no audio, so it's been going on in real time. Okay. So some, some things are muted, oscillator two goes on and off. So the MIDI integration is uh, exceptional, I must say. I'm a MIDI fan and I love the MIDI integration in Cubase and Nuendo. And of course, all these instruments are multi-output. So if, you, if I go to my mixing console, uh, I will see that I have my main instrument, but I also have separate tracks because I have a multi-output on the drums and I'm able to mix the separate pads of the drums in my mixing console. So I'm able to apply VST plugins to each one of the pads of my groove agent, which is the drums, 
the, the drum kit that, that will be the drum, drum player that comes with Luendo. Great. So just to make it clear, it's it's uh, all the QS things are there. And of course, I just want to give you a highlight. This is just scratching the surface, of course, because it's so deep um, that, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm super glad if there's people interested in this, I'm super glad to just make a, a musical, um, let's say, presentation of Nuendo. And just to mention VST Connect, if you want to remotely record somebody on the web, then you're able to do it with VST Connect. VST Connect is something that allows you to record through the web and the player or the performer or the person who is doing the speech or whoever you are recording into Nuendo does not need to have Nuendo or Cubase. They can only download the, or they can download the VST Performer application and basically it's free and it connects to Nuendo and then you have, you can record through the internet. So right now in these times, it has become very, very handy for music. It has MIDI support. So if you cannot play very well MIDI instrument, then of course you can have somebody play it for you and just have the MIDI come in. Or you can also have dialogue for dialogue replacement for movies, for example. So you, the talents do, do not have to go to the studio. And um, we will be going through immersive audio next week in full detail. This is something that is, uh, let's say, it's a kind of trending right now because there's the services for streaming, the streaming services are supporting immersive audio. Right now there's about two of them, three of them on the works. And Dolby Atmos is the key word for that. Right now is uh, the, the trend. We will be explaining Dolby Atmos in very much detail next week. So if you are interested in Dolby Atmos for music next week, I will do a whole session for this because it's not as easy as a stereo mix. There's some things that we have to connect, but this is the marketing motto and it's, it might very well be the case that music just changed forever. And what this, mean, what this means is that the major labels are remixing everything or most of their major artists into Dolby Atmos. And that's to be delivered to the streaming services. Now, this is not the same mix. People have to basically remix the whole thing because it's a whole different environment. When we talk about surround, even 5.1 and 7.1, that's actually 2D audio. But when we put some height speakers, which is what Dolby Atmos does, they have some speakers on the ceiling. Now we have three-dimensional audio. And there is some support for this uh, being also applied to the headphones. So Dolby Atmos, just a very brief explanation of what it is. And if you're interested in this, then tune in next week. It's basically a 9.1 surround sound. And then you have the so-called objects. So the, the 9.1, they call it the Atmos bed, and that's the sub mix for the whole surround. So the main mix of the surround. And then the objects are these speakers placed around that you can just pan things up and on the sides. And it's very immersive and it's very good. The power of it is that it's just one file that gets rendered each and every time. So it can be applied to different facilities. So if you have that file, that master file that Nuendo is able to create, then you can apply that file to a film theater, as well as to a movie theater, uh, a home movie theater, as well as an immersive uh, installation anywhere in the world, basically. So it will adapt to the speaker setup. And that's why it's so smart and so it's so nice. And of course, we do have the panner for this in Nuendo, which is the multi-panner, and it will allow you to pan things on the height speakers. And now just briefly mentioning, because um, this is also a whole new topic uh, that it's very exciting, game audio. We do have support and integration uh, and we actually have the whole workflow covered. So what, what, what I mean by that is that you can start with the music and the sound design. Uh, you can record the dialogue with the ADR replacement that we have that I will be talking about next week. 
You can rename the whole thing. So all the files at once, a thousand files, you can just take an Excel sheet and just rename the whole thing to comply with the client's necess needs or necessities, like naming schemes. Then you can export and render everything in just one go. And that's something I'll actually show you real quick. And then we have Game Audio Connect, which connects to the middlewares, which is basically what implements the sound in the video games. So the whole thing for music and sound design and dialogue, it's into Nguyen. And we have connectivity to two major um, middlewares. A middleware is basically what integrates the sound to the games. So there's usually some person that, let's say, uh, is the sound design and the music composer, and then there's a person that integrates all that and makes it interactive. So for example, if you open a door, then the door sounds when you open it. That's something that Nuendo cannot do because it's not made for that. So Nuendo is basically a linear editing audio suite and it has a determined start and end point. And WYS, which is the middleware that we, one of the middlewares that we support is non-linear. Non so it will adapt to the user's input. So we have a bridge that connects all this all the way through the game. So you can actually even taste, uh, test, taste, yeah, no, test the game. And it, it can be in one computer. And actually, if we had a little bit of more time, I, will, I would be able to show you this. If there's people interested in me showing all this, I can also offer myself to you just do a game audio workshop because it's very it's not something that i can show you just one minute but um we do have the support and we can actually create the sound integrate it into the middleware and play it in the game engine in just one computer and and go back and forth and actually all the metadata is on the file so you can always go back to whatever you created the file in nuendo which is super convenient and it's all made for just one little window. This little window, if you drag and drop files when WISE is open, WISE, which is the middleware, it will go straight to WISE and you can integrate it into the game very easily. And it can be more than one file also. And I just wanted to show you up, um, uh, about the mix down and the delivery section that we have because it's very powerful. You can have, Let's say you want to have a stere the stereo mix of this song. And so I select the stereo out. And in this case, um, I save my settings. I think they're OK. And I can say add to queue. So now I have the stereo out who is ready to be rendered. But if I want to have, for example, stems for an artist, then you can select multiple and you can select whatever stems you want. And then you can add to queue. And then all of this will be done in just one click. So if I click start queue export, all of that will be done in just one step. So even if you have multiple renders that will take a long time, then you can just click start queue export and just go make a coffee, come back, they will be there for you. So it's very, very convenient. And for the ending part, last but not least, virtual reality. So we do have support for ambisonics, <clears throat> which is basically you can think about it as a full sphere surround sound technique. And what is the advantage of ambisonics? Well, very big one, it has head tracking. So whenever you move your head, then the sounds will change accordingly and will be pinned to your to whatever you are located. So for game audio, for immersive movies, for, for, for there's so many applications that this is so great. And this is one of the main things why it's so popular. So with VR, when you have your goggles on and your headphones, head tracking is very important. So if you have a monster coming from this side, you, know, you want to turn to that side and, and just check the monster, right? So... We 
of course, have also a panner for this, which is a 360 panner. And basically in Ambisonics, you are in the middle of the sphere. So you can just move things around, but in a 360 manner. And we have support for a very impressive thing called DRVR, which basically allows you to use the controllers that are normally you use for gaming. And you can put your goggles and mix, mix inside the VR world with Nguyen. And this is something that is a partnership and a, because it's almost impossible to show this way uh, in a practical manner. I used to show this presentially in, in trade shows and it was also a lot of fun. But today I will just put a little video so that we can see how this works because I cannot have all the goggles and you, can, you cannot see how, what I'm seeing on the goggles. So I'm just gonna go and search for a small portion of a video so you can see how this looks like. And it's pretty, pretty impressive. Let me see if I have my sound going through the right interface so you have sound. Yes, okay. So basically, you have, you have your controllers and, and the spheres, those spheres are the tracks in Nuendo. And with the other controller, you have the volume, for example. So you can just, with the triggers, you can grab a sphere, which is basically a track. And this case is called Droid, but this is the name of the track in Nuendo. And you can just grab it and move it around. And if you put automation right in Nuendo, then it will start panning things around. You can move it closer to you. You can move it way far away. It has an effect on the sound, of course. And it's a very impressive way and a new way to mix in VR. I, you, I have mixed without this and then with this. And with, uh, the without, is very, it, it's, the difference is so impressive because if you're mixing with the mouse and with the goggles, you have to be putting your goggles all the time on and off, on and off. And then you have to be looking at Nuendo, so forth, so on. With this, you have in your transport of Nuendo and even your mixing console is there. So you, you basically are immersed. And as you can see the lady here, she has the controller on the, their, in the hands. And she, as she turns, all the VR world turns and you can just move things around and place objects around. So this is super impressive. And I hope you get to experience this at some point in time. And with that, that's the core part of the first session. And uh, now um, we will have the Q&A. So thank you so much for listening and I'm open to questions. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Mr. Aldo, for all your sharing, I believe. All of you have uh, some good input for whatever, for what, whatever that Mr. Aldo have shared. Me, myself, already have a lot of input, a new one that I cannot wait to test it later. And so far, we don't have any Q&A. Maybe we just give a minute. If you guys have any, you just can type it out in the Q&A chat box. And also, if you have some questions that come to your mind, next week we'll be here. So you can tune in and you can have, uh, if there's something you forget or you want to really ask uh, after you try it, next week will be another opportunity for this, just in case. <laughs> so tune in. Aldo, hi. Uh, there was a small question from one of the participants, Mr. Razif, about uh, to be able to quickly show the integration of WISE. Yes. If that's possible, or maybe you can cover that later. It's up to you. I can do it as quick as I can. And for that, I'll open a project. I was actually ready for this. Only if, if, if some people wanted to see it, I will open it because um, if nobody's interested, it's very boring to see. Oh, well, it's not boring to see. It's just that it's, uh, it kind of can confuse you, but I will, and I will do it in a way that will not confuse you. <laughs> so we have a project here that is for game audio. And um, my main game audio window, it's uh, most of the most important things are on the project, on the project window. So if I go to my project window, 
then I have Game Audio Connect. And then I also have a workspace for this. So workspace is like, um, well, it didn't work that well for this monitor because I have it in another monitor. <laughs> but a workspace, basically you can save how Nuendo looks and then call it workspace. And then you can arrange the, the, the let's say the windows as you wish. So in this case, for example, this workspace didn't work that well. So I'm gonna update it. And then if I go to my normal other, any other workspace and I come, I come back, then it will be there for me. And the reason I have this workspace like this is because I'm gonna open WWISE. As mentioned before, WWISE is the one that will integrate the sounds that I created in Nuendo into the game. Okay. So this is a whole new, a whole different software. The good thing is that, oh, I think I click exit, sorry. <laughs> the good thing is that you can download WWISE for free and use it until you start making some good money. So uh, what that means is that you can try it. And uh, basically, oh, sorry. I'm just being too fast for my computer. <laughs> I will leave it alone. Okay. Um, um, it will open and it will work. Just uh, I normally be, when when I'm not connected through internet, it's faster. So I'm just uh, I'm not used to this kind of soft, uh, slow workflow. Okay, I'm gonna open a project that actually comes with WISE. As I was I was saying before, you can download it, you can try it. Even Nuendo and WISE, you can download and try them, and WISE will be working there for you until you need to have, let's say your game go to several devices or to several different, where, where you start growing, then you will need a license. But if you are just uh, using it for testing purposes, then it's okay. In this case, I think it's not responding for some reason. Yeah, sometimes when you have PowerPoint, Nuendo, Zoom, and wise, and sometimes the computers behave differently. Let's just try one more time. And basically, disk is the window that will connect WISE with Nuendo. Let's try it one more time. I'll double click that, and hopefully, now it will load. I know my computer is struggling with this because I can hear my fans going crazy. <laughs> And um, uh, you can, there's several ways to just take things into WISE. So now it's there. Let's just resize this so we can have it. This is a complete different software than Nuendo. And uh, the way, just to explain a little bit how it is, it has the so-called containers. Every container has, for example, I'm not a, a, an expert on this, but um, this is the shotgun container, for example. So for the shotgun sound of the game. And air, there's sounds all over in these containers. And then you can create the, in, the interactivity in this middleware. So that's why it, it doesn't look like a normal DAW with a timeline, because if there's no timeline. So then um, I'm going to open the game that is actually being connected here. And that, for that, I'll go to a terminal. And I have the archive here, and let's try that. So, okay. So let's say I have my game and there's some mistake in one sound. Uh, in this case, the shotgun is not the best. So we, we definitely have to change it, right? So I'm gonna quit this. And uh, I'm going to go and just search in my media bay for, let's say, a gun, maybe. Uh, well, it could be anything. I'll just use this, which is kind of like a white noise. But anyway, so if you want to change that shotgun sound, you take your favorite sound. And in this case, uh, I'm just going to edit this a little bit. Sometimes. The sounds are very um, long. In this case, it was not the case, but I, I just wanted to make sure because I don't want to be wasting rendering time 
So let's make it short. Let's put some fades. And then I, I can see that because I when I select things here, I can see it's changing on my main game audio connect window. So when I select the shotgun blast, then I can see that it's connected to that container, shotgun blast. So if I drag and drop, it will basically render it with the settings and it will ask you if you want to import. Once you say that you want to import it, you have to generate uh, the code for, I mean, you have to generate the code so it basically change the sound and now it already did it. And uh, if I go back to my terminal and I try the game again, so I'm gonna go here and press this and now it changes. And that's as how easy it is to just change things. If you have several pro, um, audio files, you can do it through the audio mix, the, through the export. And even if you have MIDI files, even if you have a MIDI song, it's also supported to just put some MIDI files into WWYs. So that's how you do it. <laughs> of course, super fast. <laughs> And as I mentioned before, if there's any interested, in, interested people in the region to have a showcase on just Game Audio Connect and all the renaming tools and all these things, just contact your Yamaha local guy and they will contact me and we can arrange it, no problem. Right. If, if you don't have any Q&A question, we have come to the end for today's webinar. And like Mr. Aldo mentioned, we have part two for more detailed, more post-production webinar coming soon. Do follow our Facebook. We provide the link and registration will be available by this week or next week. All right. If there's no more question, so we will end this webinar by now. All right. Are you okay? Thank you so much for that. And All right. See you next week then. Thank you for everything. Thank you Thank so you much, Mr. Thank you guys. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Same wise. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.